what is going on, beautiful people? I am Avas, and I'm going to talk about how I built a Jamstack application that is backendless with Vue.js, React.js, and Node.js. I know it sounds like what, but before you go there, let me introduce myself. So I am Ahmed Avas, a principal developer advocate for JavaScript and open source at Cloudinary, and I love the web platform. I serve at the Node.js Community Committee. I've also written a couple hundred of developer tools that are all open source, which is kind of why Google recognizes me as a Google developer expert for web tech. Over a million developers have downloaded my open source products and tools, and I'm sort of that engineer who loves emoji. If you want to follow what I do, or if you want to learn from me, then I share these one dev minutes and sort of use my Twitter account as a mini personal blog. So definitely go ahead and follow me on this Twitter handle, Mr. Ahmed Aves, on Twitter. And I'll also be tweeting out the link to these slides right after my talk. I'm also into teaching people while I entertain them, sort of entertaining them. I have launched this course on VS Code.pro, where I teach you how to improve your development skill set and development workflows. And about 13,000 or so developers are learning it already. If it is not already apparent, I love the color purple which is why I built the Shades of Purple theme suit for all sort of development environment, item to VS Code, Hypers, like, and everything. So definitely go ahead and check that out. Okay, okay, I know enough about me, enough about me already. What I'm going to talk about in this talk is CloudyCam.dev. CloudyCam is sort of a project that I did for developer division with Cloudinary, where I show you what Cloudinary can do for you. Cloudinary is sort of like if Photoshop had an API and you could program and customize and manipulate all sorts of media. It's sort of a media, serverless media stack for your Jamstack applications. I built this thing called CloudyCam. Let me show you what it looks like. So this is CloudyCam. It is sort of an IoT, it's sort of an Internet of Things, a Jamstack application where we go to all of these different events and we take your pictures and generate a demo page just for you to showcase what Cloudinary looks like. For example, let's take a look at this particular person's demo page. It is explaining all what you can do with the simplest URL API for Cloudinary, and it is generating your pages with all sorts of different demos. For example, you can add text overlay to your images and do fun stuff with your images with Cloudinary. And this is actually a Jamstack application. So IoT, built with Jamstack, and a progressive web app. Throughout this talk, I'm going to talk about how I built this application with Jamstack using all of these different modern cutting edge technology. The project requirements were actually quite simple. You take a picture, you upload it to Cloudinary, and you build a demo user page. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. But when we deployed this developer activation at a couple of conferences, we started to learn a different set of requirements that developers had and sort of the operational experience for developers and the developer experience. So what we ended up wanting is, or needing is, the build time that should be less than 15 seconds. That is a huge deal. For example, when we take your picture, and the moment you move back towards us and kind of ask what happened to your picture and how you can get it, the entire Jamstack application has already built a page for you, the demo that you were looking for which is going to explain how, how Cloudinary URL API works. But not only this, we also wanted to do multiple simultaneous demos at the same event. And we then had multiple developer events, multiple simultaneous demos. And this was my developer experience at that moment. <laughs> like, this is fairly complex. So I needed to make a lot of decisions here. What kind of front end am I going to use? Am I even going to have a backend for simple developer activation or not? And then what about documentation? Okay, at that moment, I was really feeling overwhelmed. You might be too. It is a simple demo application that you are building, but it has got all of these really complex requirements. You need it to be performing. You need to sort of have multiple backends for it. I'm going to explain that later. Take in the Jamstack, a revolutionary stack that I really love. You know, it has the JavaScript, APIs, and markup thing covered. For example, for me, I love the JavaScript. It has high paid jobs. It is sometimes really fun to work with. And it is a language of choice for me. So either front end or back end, I wanted to write code in JavaScript. Whereas I also needed a lot of APIs there. For example, I needed an API to fetch your images 
to this whatever backend that I'm going to build. And then I need to needed to process it, resize it, send it to Cloudrunny, upload there, patch it back, modify it, put effects on it. You see where I'm going with this? And then there was the documentation part of it. I love to write documentation, and I also love to have contributors contribute to the documentation by keeping it developers friendly. You know, I want the documentation to be in Markdown. And Jamstack kind of provides me that out of the box. Jamstack is kind of built around this idea of markup. And I personally believe that markup is one of the most important aspects of Jamstack. You can use Markdown, you can use MDX, Markdown plus JSX, where you can kind of import React components inside of Markdown. How cool is that? You can use Pug, Mustache, and Handlebars. You can use whatever markup language you feel comfortable with or whatever markup language that is best for that use case. Okay, you see how complex this application has become? It was a simple demo, but now multiple developers are going to generate multiple demos at multiple events, and there is documentation which is needed to be in Markdown. The front end needs to have really good routing support, I'm also building a progressive web app. You see where this is going. So let's talk about the front end options I have. There were really two needs. I wanted first class routing and server side rendering for better SEO and everything. But I got to have was PWS support. So definitely I went ahead and started looking at Gatsby.js. Remember I talked about my VS Code.pro course? The entire front end website for my course has been built through Gatsby.js. So I know what Gatsby is like and I really like it. Gatsby has impressive documentation and a community of products around it. But I felt like that routing is sort of a second year citizen with Gatsby.js. You see, I needed to produce different pages. For example, cloudycam.dev slash aves is my demo page, or cloudycam.dev slash your name is your demo page. So routing really needed to be a first year citizen. That was a very hard requirement for this project. So I ended up looking at Next.js. Impressive documentation again. A community of developers building examples and solutions based on Next.js and Jamstack website. But what really stuck with me was an excellent support for routing. And that is what this project really needed. Moreover, it has an excellent support for server-side running. Although the progressive web app support was a bit plus minus, but I did end up building a Next.js progressive web app. Now that I had decided to go with Next.js, I knew that Next.js founders have this hosting platform for Zite. So Next.js kind of integrates really well with Zite. And that is when I was thinking about the backend option. So for backend, I needed a serverless setup because why not? And then I also needed a backendless backend. So in a similar way, like serverless is not really serverless. It does have a server, but you do not need to configure it, orchestrate it, monitor it, but not. It is not really a server that you manage. So we call it serverless. I think similarly, a backend that you do not need to know much about, that you do not need to configure a lot, that you do not need to operate or you know install, is sort of a backendless approach. And that is exactly what I wanted for this application. But what I also wanted was monorepo support. You know, why monorepo? Because I wanted to build my APIs. I wanted to configure my application with the Cloudrunny Node.js API because I wanted to upload your images via Node.js to the Cloudrunny server. And to do that, I also wanted to build some sort of an API, some sort of a REST or GraphQL API on top of this that was based on Node.js because I love JavaScript. My app, the next JS Jamstack app can use that API. But that meant that I had to install a new backend. And remember, I'm also going to talk about documentation where I wanted a backend that could produce markdown to pre rendered HTML site for the documentation of this part. You see how backend options are kind of growing, whereas I am only looking for a easy to go serverless and no managing of a backend or backendless approach here. So the scenes here, Node.js, Hell yeah, I wanted to use Node.js. I ended up learning a lot about Zeit's Now platform. Zeit's Now platform kind of takes all of the boxes that I was looking for. No servers to manage, scale or orchestrate, deploy, react, view, node, even go or bash. It also allows you to kind of have the backend with node, go, Python, PHP, and it is really excellent how they manage it. You do not really need to configure it. I'm going to talk more about it 
But before I do, let me tell you that there is a zero configuration monorepo support here. That is what I wanted. Project where part of my API was static. I needed a backend that would produce static files so that my build time is less than 15 seconds. But I've also wanted a dynamic Node.js backend that had the ability to render out Vue or React.js based Jamstack app. So you see, when you start a right now project, it has a now.json file that can allow you to sort of configure your backend. And there are sort of builds that I ended up using where you can define the builds. For example, for HTML, you can define a now static builder. For Py, you can define a Python. Or for Node, you can define a Node.js builder. And that is exactly what I ended up doing. My single monorepo application had different routes had different sort of files that had different meaning. They now also have an ability to go completely configure free where you use functions, serverless functions. For example, you can define you can define that in my API's directory, the test.js file needs to have this amount of memory and this amount of duration. Or you can define a custom community supported now PHP builder for that particular serverless function. And that is really interesting. Having a single monorepo project where different parts of my application would pertain to different sort of backends. Or I could just add a file.go for go rendering inside of an API folder. Or I could just use the serverless functions where inside of the API directory, or if, since I was using Next.js inside of the pages slash API directory, I could just put an index. JS or TS file in, and that would be a Node.js file. Similarly, I could use Go or Python as well, because for example, with .js or .ts files, you get the default runtime of Node.js 10. And you can build your API in a very simple way. API slash hello.js, and if you access that, you get that API. It was that simple. No configuration, just writing my code that is giving me the API that my application needs. So in my mind, I started architecturing this Jamstack application this way. I would take a picture, I would send it to Cloudinary, and then I will do a bunch of things on it and produce an API that is available statically in less than 15 seconds. So right now, hosting platform did really solve a huge set of problems here for me. It allowed me to go completely back and less. It allowed me to sort of build a backend without building a backend and supporting and managing it. Now I was left with the interesting problem of all the documentation. I wanted my documentation to be marked down only. So more and more developer friendly markup. So more and more of my team members could probably contribute to it. But I also sort of didn't want to build the UI for my documentation because who has the time to do that? I wanted something that is Jamstack, which is content focused, has a very good UI for documentation. And the good to have feature here for my documentation was having the ability to search through my documentation. I didn't really want to go ahead and build that on my own. So after looking at a couple of solutions, I ended up with ViewPress. ViewPress is a Vue.js based static site generator or sort of like static documentation site generator, which is focused, really focused on front end. It has a pretty amazing documentation. It renders a markdown to pre-rendered HTML. Content is searchable out of the box. I don't have to do anything whatsoever. And it is really configurable. For example, if you take a look at the documentation and then in markdown extensions, you can do a bunch of things here. For example, one thing that I really liked was these custom containers. So you uh, use this sort of syntax. There you go, it generates this particular tip or a voting, and you can even customize these things. So in my project, I created a docs folder and inside there was all the documentation that I needed in my project written in good old, plain old Markdown. And I configured a builder to use the output of ViewPress as a static website. So it gets deployed statically and I get to use the entire power of ViewPress, which is extremely configurable. And I actually even ended up adding my custom styles. As you can see, this is the Shades of Purple theme, which I'm using for the code snippets here. As you can see, this is the Shades of Purple theme. Super easy. I just added the CSS for Prism here, and my ViewPress site, my documentation site, is all configured to my liking. 
And for example, you can actually search things like delete, and there's a command for delete, and it will take you to that particular command. It was super easy to build, right? And really fun with all of these nice looking UI commands like this one. And then my manager, without really having any sort of input from me, ended up contributing a wireless documentation on how we are configuring camera to laptop connection in different conferences because all he really needed to do was contribute markdown. And there we had it. So my Jamstack application is based on React for the front end, based on Vue for the documentation. And it has both static JSON-based API as well as an entire Node.js backend that is producing some dynamic APIs to deal with server management, uploading, and the admin part of this Jamstack application. I think that was a job well done. With Jamstack, I was able to use Next.js, ViewPress, and Cloudery to manage my front-end documentation and media. And I put everything in a mono repo, single repository for this entire project that basically costed me nothing to use right now. This is an entire serverless way of managing my backend without ever having to manage it. This Jamstack plus mono repo approach helped me improve the developer experience and the operational experience while building it, while managing it, and while using it for the developer activation. And that's pretty much about it. I hope you enjoyed my talk today and I'm going to try this Jamstack plus mono repo approach at home because it's totally safe. I'm going to share the link to these slides on Twitter, tweet all of your questions to me. See ya, peace.